As the Russia-Ukraine war continues to unfold, fresh reports have emerged of intensified fighting in eastern Ukraine. Both sides have been respectively issuing strong statements on their military progress in the conflict. Ukraine is one month into its counteroffensive and almost 17 months into the conflict with Russia. Kyiv has officially stated or has officially stated that it is showing credible signs of progress in taking back its territory from Moscow. Remember the bloody battle of Bakhmut? Well, the two armies are reportedly indulged in a fresh round of fighting in the ruined city. Ukrainian forces say that they are gradually moving forward along its southern flank and have advanced more than one kilometer into the region. But the Kremlin has a different story to tell. President Vladimir Putin has called Ukraine's counteroffensive a failure yet again. But he is not the only one saying this. U.S. media reports have cited their country's officials stating that Ukraine has lost about 20% of military equipment and weapons since it started its counteroffensive measures. With the United States being Ukraine's front-running ally in the war, the numbers do not speak well of the latter's so-called progress. Five weeks into a counteroffensive that even Ukrainian officials say is off to a halting start, commanders and soldiers fighting along the front lines indicate the slow progress comes down to one major problem, landmines. Ukraine's army is also hindered by a lack of air support and the deep network of defensive structures the Russians have built. Meanwhile, Russia has also responded to the cluster bomb developments in Ukraine. Despite being banned in more than 100 countries, Kyiv received cluster bombs from the United States. Ukraine has pledged to only use them to dislodge concentrations of enemy soldiers. In a television interview, Russian President Vladimir Putin showed no hesitance to use cluster bombs should the need arise. Хочу отметить, что в Российской Федерации достаточный запас различного рода кассетных боеприпасов. Различного рода. Мы до сих пор этого не делали, не применяли. И у нас не было такой необходимости, несмотря на, на известную нехватку в определенный период времени. И у нас тоже боеприпасов. Но мы этого не делали. Но, конечно, если они будут применяться против нас, мы оставляем за собой право на зеркальные действия. Fact is, the past month has been a harrowing one, difficult phase of the war for the Ukrainian army. Besides the challenges on the ground, there is pressure to advance quickly and demonstrate to Western allies that the policy of arming Ukraine can turn the tide. Dov Zakhayem, the former under Secretary of Defense in George W. Bush administration and currently a senior advisor at Center for Strategic and International Studies is now joining us live from Washington, D.C. Dove, welcome to the program. Now, Ukraine is confident of making gains in their counteroffensive, but uh, Putin says otherwise. He has called it a failure. How would you gauge the counteroffensive so far? Well, I think part of the problem was that there was too much hype or hyperbole about the success of the counteroffensive, leading people to believe that Ukraine would roll up the Russians in a matter of weeks. And that was ridiculous. Counteroffensives take time, in part because the, uh, the, the, the party that's attacking has to find a weak point on the part of the defender. Now, in the case of uh, what's going on right now, Obviously, the landmines are a problem. Uh, secondly, they do need uh, air, additional air, and so it's taking longer. But bear in mind a couple of things. First, on the cluster bombs. Yes, Mr. Putin says he'll use them. But what's the difference? The point about cluster bombs is that they kill innocent people. The Russians have been killing innocent people since the start of the war. They've been targeting hospitals. They've been targeting schools. They've been targeting blocks of flats. So <laughs> cluster bombs aren't going to make much difference in terms of the poor, innocent people that the Russians are killing anyway. Secondly, 
Uh, and equally important, remember that Ukraine is not losing ground. They are gaining ground. Maybe it's slow, but they are gaining ground. The Russians are not. So the whole idea of a Russian offensive and the Russians hoping that they could take over Ukraine or most of it clearly has collapsed. Obviously, Mr. Putin says what he says. He has to save face. He's lost hundreds of thousands of people wounded or, or dead. He's lost far more ammunition and equipment than he anticipated. So, of course, he's putting on a brave face. Yes, the Ukrainians are losing ammunition. Yes, they're losing equipment, but they're being resupplied. But Dov, let me ask you this. If Kyiv does indeed fail in the counteroffensive, what would that mean both for the war and for Russia? Well, it's a hypothetical. It's not clear that they'll fail in the counteroffensive. They may not get as far as they had hoped in the counteroffensive, or they may not have gone as quickly as they wanted in the counteroffensive. But failure essentially means that not only would they be stopped, but that the Russians would advance. And that one I just don't see happening. Dov, the United States has vowed to proceed with providing Ukraine with cluster munitions or bombs. Will that have any impact on the war? Will it embolden Ukraine in the battlefield? Well, the Ukrainians, as you have reported, have made it very clear that they'll only use the cluster bombs uh, against high concentrations of Russian forces. Uh, given that uh, they know that if they were to break their word, we would not only cut back on the cluster bombs, we, but we might cut back on support generally, they're going to have to play it as they say it and as they've promised us. And if you look at how Ukraine has operated in the last year, nearly year and a half of this war, they've never broken their word to us. They know it's far too dangerous for them. They need our support. So when they say they're only going after uh, concentrations of Russians, I think they mean it. All right. I've been talking to a senior advisor at Center for Strategic and International Studies. His name is Dov Zakhaim. Dov, thank you very much for talking to We On World is One today. Well, thank you so much for having me. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.